coastal plains and islands. First, the Western Ghats and the Western Coastal Plains. The Deccan Plateau extending south of Satpura hill ranges is bordered by the Ghats on its western and eastern sides. However, the Ghats through the coast differ considerably. Then Physiography The Western Ghats Extending from the Salher Mulher peaks located in the north the Western Ghats run parallel to the Arabian Sea through the entire length of the peninsula for a distance approximately 1,600 kilometers. These Ghats form the edge of the plateau and are called Sayyadris. Generally, the Sayyadris are classified as Northern Sayyadri, the area bordering Maharashtra Plateau, Central Sayyadri, forming the boundary of Karnataka Plateau, and Southern Sayyadris, extending south of Palghat Gap. In the northern Ghats, we have basalt as the main rock, while in the central, we come across granite, granitic gneisses, or some of the meta sedimentary rocks. In the extreme south, granite or granitic gneisses dominates the region. In all three parts, one common rock, that is laterites, are found, which are rich in iron and bauxite. The highest peak in the Ghats is Anaimudi, which is located in Annamalai Hills. The Western Ghats form the source region of the peninsular rivers like Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri. Then, the Western Coastal Plains. It is subdivided into three parts. The first one, the Gujarat Coast. Gujarat has the longest coastline. Most of the land is in the form of salt marshes. It is a shallow portion of sea between the run of Kutch and the Kathiawad Peninsula. Another major gulf of Gujarat coast is the Gulf of Kamba. The major rivers like the Sabarmati, the Narmada and the Tapi empty their waters. Then second, the Kokan coast. The narrow strip of land between the Arabian Sea and the Western Ghats is known as Kokan Malbar coast. The Kokan coast is more or less a rocky coast. Then three, the Malbar coast. The southernmost portion of the west coast has some relatively flat lands. It is characterized by the development of lagoons and backwaters locally known as Kyles. Webnar is one of the longest backwater areas of Kerala. Then climate. The western Ghats run parallel to the west coast and act as a barrier for the southwest monsoon winds and cause heavy rainfall in the region during the monsoon period. The climate is hot and humid during the monsoon season and hot and dry in the rest of the year. Then soils. Soils in the western Ghats as well as in the adjoining plains are laterite. Soils are brownish red in color. In Gujarat plains, one comes across alluvial soils. The natural vegetation and animals. In the south, we have typical Shola forest having a variety of species. Eucalyptus and teak are to be seen in the plantation forest. The animals, elephants, leopard, black panthers, bears, and a variety of langur. Cashew nut and jackfruit are planted under a forestation program. In the North Kokan region, Anjan and Kanchan are dominant. Then population and settlement. Billa and Varlis in Maharashtra, Todas in Karnataka, and Koragas are found in Kerala. Sea have a high density of population due to the number of urban centers that have developed along the coast at port locations. Then economic development. Rice is the main food crop. The coffee plantation in Baba Budan Hills, tree plantation in Udagamandalam and Munnar areas and spices in Kerala Tamil Nadu Ghat areas are the major plantation in these areas. Due to adequate rainfall, Jawar and Bajra are the major food crops of Gujarat plains. 
Cocon is typically spotted with plantations of coconut and arcanut. Then mining, minerals like bauxite, manganese and iron ore are extracted from different parts of the Ghan. The important mining areas are Goa and Kudre Mook in the central Sayadri. Then industries. The only major industrial township located in the Ghat section is Goimatur in Tamil Nadu. It is a center of textile and engineering industry. Ahmedabad Surat in Gujarat is a major textile industrial region of our country. Then transportation. Road transport is the main form of transportation in the Ghat zone. The coastal areas have relatively a good road network. The Kokan Railway running almost parallel to the national highways has improved the accessibility of the coastal region. The rest of the country is connected by airways. Then tourism, Satpura in Gujarat, Mahabaleshwar in Maharashtra, Kodai Canal and Tamil Nadu and Munnar in Kerala are some important hill stations. Along the coastal tracks, beaches like Srivardhan and Guhagar in Maharashtra, Kolwa and Kalangut in Goa, Karwar in Karnataka and Kovalam in Kerala are famous tourist destinations. The Natural Hazards Due to exploitation of the natural resources, it is difficult to protect and maintain the faunal diversity in the region. Now we'll turn to the next part, the Eastern Ghats and Eastern Coastal Plains. First, we geography. The Eastern Ghats are located along the eastern margins of the Deccan Plateau. It is an independent mountain system. It extends from Tamil Nadu in the south to Odisha in the north. The sections of the Eastern Ghats are the northernmost part of the Eastern Ghat falls within the state of Odisha. Similipal can be taken as the northernmost significant hill complex of the Ghats. The Eastern Ghats have peaks like Malagiri in the same area. The Eastern Ghats in Andhra are quite prominent except for the area between the Krishna and Godavari rivers. To the south of river Krishna are the ranges of Nallamala, Velikonda and Palkonda which run roughly in the north-south direction. The region of convergence of western and eastern Ghats. The eastern Ghats are supposed to be the physiographically converging with the western Ghats in the Nilgiri hills. The Biligiri hills which run east from the western Ghats form a forested ecological corridor that connects the eastern and western Ghats. Then the eastern coastal plains. The coastline of Bay of Bengal extends from Kanyakumari to the Sundarbans. It is characterized by a number of deltas that are formed by the peninsular rivers and also the Ganga Brahmaputra system. The entire coast is divided into first one, the Tamil Nadu coast, which is referred to as Koromandal coast. It extends from Kanyakumari up to the Krishna delta. The coast between Kanyakumari and Rameshwaram island is bordered by the Gulf of Mannar. It is known for its pearl banks. This coast also has numerous lagoonal lakes of which Lake Pulikat is most noteworthy. Then Andhra Odisha coast. It starts from a little south of Krishna Delta. Krishna, Godavari and Mahanadi Deltas and the Chilka Lake are the most significant features of this coastal zone. Chilka Lake is the largest salt water lake in India and a fresh water lake named Kolleru Lake is found here. Climate The Eastern Ghats act as the barrier for northeast monsoon winds. Soils The soils from the Eastern Ghats are mostly developed over ancient rocks like granite and gneisses. There are different forms of red soils. The dominant is red loamy soils 
which do not retain moisture and generally they are not very fertile soils. The eastern coastal region has mostly young alluvial soils which retain their fertility levels. The natural vegetation and animals. The eastern ghats receive moderate rainfall hence most forests in these areas belong to the tropical moist deciduous or tropical dry deciduous types. Then population and settlement. The coastal plains show high concentration of population. Then economic development. In most of the areas, rice continues to be the main food crop. In some cases, oil seeds appear at the next important crop. Then mining. The area consists of ancient rock formations with predominance of igneous and metamorphic rocks and hence the eastern ghats are gifted with iron ore, manganese, bauxite, etc. Then industries. Coastal plains have well developed industries such as engineering industry, machine tools, tires industry and automobile industry in Chennai and shipbuilding, IT industry, chemical, paper, automotors in Vishakhapatnam. Then transportation. The network of road and railways is well developed in the eastern coastal plains. A major portion of golden quadrangle joining Kolkata and Chennai runs through this section. The area is also served by coastal waterways. Then natural hazards and environmental problems. The eastern coastal plains are particularly vulnerable to frequent tropical cyclones. The coastal ecosystem, particularly along the Odisha and Tamil Nadu coast, are threatened due to high level of pollution in the region. The Ghat section has rich mineral deposits and their extraction is causing depletion of biotic reserves in the area. Now we'll turn to the islands. Indian territory besides mainland India includes two groups of islands located far off from the mainland. In both these island groups, we come across colonies of live corals. Now the first one, Lakshadweep group in the Arabian Sea. This is a group of 36 islands inlets or reefs located in the Arabian Sea. They form the northernmost portion of a submerged mountain range containing Lakshadweep, Maldives and Chagos group of islands in the Arabian Sea. These islands are of coral origin which are supposed to have been developed around volcanic peaks. Then, second one, the Andaman Nicobar Islands. This group of islands includes as many as 570 islands of varying sizes of which about 38 are inhabited. Though normally referred to as Andaman Nicobar Islands, it consists of two distinct groups separated by a deep channel called 10 degree channel. Then Andaman group, the Andaman Islands consist of two groups, Great Andaman and Little Andaman. Narrow creeks separate the Great Andaman into North Andaman, Middle Andaman and South Andaman. All these islands are in the form of peaks of a submerged mountain chain. The barren island located to the east of Middle Andaman is the only active volcano in India. Then Nicobar group, the Nicobar lying to the south of the 10 degree channel forms a distinct group of islands containing 22 islands. 10 are inhabited and this group of islands includes coral islands. Now the third part, coastal islands. Beside the two groups of islands described above, there exist a large number of islands along the coast of India. For example, the islands in Gulf of Kutch, along the Kokan and Malbar coasts. Then climate. Lakshadweep islands experience a tropical climate. It is hot and humid, leading 
to sultry condition. The Andaman and Nicobar Island group also basically enjoys warm tropical climate. The humidity is quite high. The natural vegetation and animals. The Lakshadweep lagoons, reefs and banks form a large storehouse of many types of living corals, seaweeds, starfish etc. As one moves towards the South Nicobar Islands, evergreen forests are to be seen. Paddock wood, being sturdier than teak, is widely used in furniture making. Aromatic resins or dhup trees and rudraksh trees are found in sizable numbers in this forest. The wildlife includes wild boar, barking deer, elephants and a number of reptiles. Variety of shells having pearly appearance support cottage industry producing a wide range of decorative items and ornaments. Population and settlement. It includes the tribal people like Great Andamani, Jarwas, Sentinelas, etc. Port Blair, the capital of the Union Territory is the main urban center. Then economic development. A large area is under coconut cultivation in the Lakshadweep Islands. Rice is the main food crop mostly cultivated in Andaman group of islands. Coconut and Arconut are the cash crops of Nicobar group of islands. Then fisheries. Fishing is the main livelihood of the islanders. Tuna, sharks, crabs, shrimp, lobsters are found in plenty. Then industry. The main industry is coconut fiber extraction and production of fiber items. The Andaman Nicobar group has some small scale village and handicraft units. There are shells and wood based handicraft units. Transportation. Though isolated from mainland India, this group of island is well connected by airways and waterways. Agati Aerodrome is the only airport in Lakshadweep. It is well connected to Kochi on the mainland. The capital city, Port Blair, is well connected to Chennai, Vishakhapatnam and Kolkata. Tourism Due to its isolation and scenic appeal, Lakshadweep is well known as a tourist attraction for Indians since long. Scuba diving, windsurfing, water skiing are quite popular activities. Mm -hmm.